I hope everybody gave some good kindness to somebody today. Um, and so we'll go to the agenda. So first is the adoption of the agenda. Commissioners, you received the agenda in advance and we'll need a motion to adopt the agenda. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. Now we're on to the approval of the January 24th, 2019 minutes. Those were also given to you in advance, and I hope you all look through those. Any edits, questions? We'll need a motion to adopt the minutes. It's a proper motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and the minutes are adopted. Now we are on to the recognition of the council members, and we take the council members as we see you come in. And first I saw Councilman Pridemore. Where's Council? Councilman, you want to wait for your item? or? Okay, no problem. Thank you for coming down. And then we saw Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, you want to go now, Councilman? Happy Valentine's Day. All right. Good job, Councilman. We appreciate you coming down. Seeing no, I, I want to make sure I got all of the council members. You were checking on the mics. Okay. Um, next is... Lisa, are you ready to do, we are on to the items for deferral withdrawal. Perfect. The following items are for deferral withdrawal. Item number 1A on page four of your agenda, 2018 CP 010003, Green Hills Midtown Community Plan Amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. The associated case, item 1B, 2018 SP 077001, Novel Edge Hill. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from items 1A and 1B. Item 2, 2015 SP 019003, on page five of your agenda, 121 Lucille SP Amendment. Staff recommendation is to withdraw. Item number four, 2019 SP 003001, the Old Hickory Retreat SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number five, 2019 SP 006001, the Third Avenue North SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number six, 2018S 204001, the Hunters Run subdivision on page five. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number seven on page six of your agenda, 2018S 210001, Mosswood subdivision lot 57 amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number eight, 2018 Z 124 PR 001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number nine, 2018 Z 129 PR 001. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number 10, 2019Z008 PR001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 13 on page 7 of your agenda, 2018SP057001, Eaton Creek Commons. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 16, 2019SP001001, the third in Jefferson SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. And I will note that Councilmember Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Um, commissioner, I'm sorry. <laughs> Promotion. Um, sorry. Item number 19, uh, 188-84P001, Century South, uh, 
revision to planned unit development. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 21 on page eight of your agenda, 3206 West End Circle, 2005 UD 006040. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number 24 on page nine of your agenda, 2019Z023PR001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the March 14th Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. So commissioners, let's uh, go through these slow so we don't miss any. Um, there's been a couple added. So these items, and, and make sure I get these rightly. So 1A, 1B, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 16, 19, 21, and 24. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so you heard those, commissioners, you've heard those items for deferral. Is there a motion to defer? There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those items are deferred. Now we're on to item F, which is the consent agenda. Lisa. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with a decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. As notice to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. The following items are on the consent agenda. Item number 11 on page six of your agenda, 2019Z004TX001, a request to amend the, the Metro Zoning Code to create a corridor design overlay. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 14 on page seven of your agenda, 2018SP073001, South Hamilton and County Hospital Road, a request to rezone to SP to permit 15 units on County Hospital Road. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 15, 2018 SP 078001, the Oral Surgical Institute, 28th Avenue. It's a request to rezone from CS and IR to SP for properties located on 28th Avenue North to permit an office building. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 18 on page eight of your agenda, 2019S022001, resubdivision of lots 143 and 144 of Westmead Park, section four. It's a request to shift lot lines for properties located at 6614 Elwood Court. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 20, 2002 UD001011 on page eight of your agenda. A request for modification to the Green Hills Urban Design Overlay sign standards for two blade signs on the Green Hills Mall. Staff recommendation is to approve, and I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 22, 2019Z014PR009 on page nine of your agenda. A request to rezone from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2416 Albion Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 23, 2019Z022PR001 on page nine. A request to rezone from RS5 to R6A for properties located on 26th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to approve. And under other business, item number 28, to accept the director's report and approve administrative items. Thank you. So. I think these are correct. So the items for consent agenda on the consent agenda are item 11, 14, 15, 18, 20, 22, 23, and 28. That's correct. All right. And so <clears throat> is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? There's been a motion and second. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 
suppose no. Eyes have it. And so just a few housekeeping notes for the commissioners and for the public. So we're having a problem with all of the screens um, for the commissioners on this side and also the mic. So we're gonna hand, we have a handheld mic and then there's also a live mic right there. So it's always on. And so, no, <laughs> everybody behave, yes. And um, so the items that we are gonna hear would be items, I believe this is correct, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, items three, 12A and B and 17. Is that correct? Okay, so those are the only items being um, heard. And then I also want um, to warn everybody that we've had some um, commissioners call in sick, and so we probably will lose quorum at 5.30. So if we don't get to something by then, just a heads up, uh, we will not consider that item and it will be rolled to the next calendar, okay? We will try, but it just depends on how much testimony. We wanna treat everybody fairly and go through the items systematically. So don't feel like you. we need to rush, but um, I just wanna tell everybody, warn you guys that we might end up losing quorum uh, at 5.30. All right, so item three. The next item on the agenda is item number three. This is a request for a SP to permit up to 375 multifamily residential units. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. The vacant eight acre site is located along West Trinity Lane, approximately 400 feet west of Brownlow Street in the Bordeaux Whites Creek, Haynes Trinity Community Plan area. The site is located within a larger area of single family residential zoning. Nearby zoning districts include single family residential, one and two family residential, specific plan residential, mixed use neighborhood alternative, and office residential. Uses near the site consist of single family residential and vacant land. The site is located in the conservation and urban residential corridor policy areas. Conservation policy is intended to preserve environmentally sensitive land features through protection and remediation. Conservation policy applicable to this site identifies a small area of steep slopes located along site frontage on West Trinity Lane along the site, south, southern site boundary. Urban residential corridor policy is intended to maintain, enhance, and create urban residential corridors. In the fall of 2017, the planning department worked on possible refinements to current land use policies in the Haynes Trinity area. Planners created a plan document based on community input received during a charrette in November of 2017 that took, various, that took into account various interests, interests and balanced them with sound planning principles. The plan amendment guides the appropriate land use, development character, and design intent of the Haynes Trinity area by balancing ideas and concerns among community stakeholders. The small area plan is used as a starting point for discussing future entitlements and public and private investment, including zone changes, such as this proposed SP, subdivisions, and public infrastructure investments. Community input from the West Trinity Lane Charette, of which hundreds of people were given multiple opportunities to participate in, was a vital part of the planning process in this area. The Planning Commission approved the West Trinity Katie Hill Haynes Community Plan Amendment by a vote of eight to zero on January 11th, 2018. Staff analyzed the proposed SP carefully against the approved plan amendment, which is now the supplemental policy for this area, and has found this proposed SP addresses the community's priorities which include infrastructure upgrades to support additional intensity of uses along West Trinity Lane and enhanced connectivity through new public streets and sidewalks. This request consists of up to 375 multifamily residential units and three buildings, a clubhouse, associated amenities, pool and walking trail, and surface parking. Proposed buildings have a maximum height of five stories along West Trinity Lane and four and a half stories in the interior of the site. Each building will have frontage onto a public street. Site access will be taken from West Trinity Lane through two new public streets and a private drive that also will serve as a public access easement. Surface parking is provided behind each proposed building in the interior of the site. Each building, excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. 
An east-west private drive that serves as a public access easement will stub to the property east of the site, providing for future connectivity. This plan also provides on-site stormwater mitigation and new sidewalks along site frontage on West Trinity Lane and along each side of the new public streets consistent with the major reflector street plan standards. And as you can see on the graphic on the screen, there's a north proposed new road going north-south as well as east-west consistent with Collector Avenue standards of the major reflector street plan. The site's location on a major arterial makes it an appropriate location for additional intensity to activate and frame the corridor. This SP proposes a moderate increase in intensity and is consistent with the goals of land use policy in this location to ensure that additional intensity is supported by adequate infrastructure. The SP is consistent with the T4 Urban Residential Corridor and Haines Trinity Supplemental Policy Goals at this location. Given the aforementioned, staff's recommendation is to approve conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Thank you very much. And commissioners, you've seen the presentation. And so now the time is to open the public hearing. So we'll open the public hearing. And where's the applicant? There he is. Come on up. It's good to see you again. So you get 10 minutes and you can save two minutes for rebuttal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Dwayne Cuthbertson, 2814 12th Avenue South. I'm here uh, representing this application today. I have Michael Garrigan with me here as well to talk about technicalities uh, of the plan uh, if need be. But uh, as Mr. Burse uh, provided for you, this is uh, over eight and a half acres of property located along Trinity Lane. It's just east of the Abernathy's truck salvage yard, uh, north of the Born Again Church and south of, uh, a fair distance south of the Haynes Trinity neighborhood. Um, as Mr. Burse suggested, this property is in the boundary of the Haynes Trinity small area plan. Uh, he also, uh, it, provided that that plan was born out of significant community engagement and input. It was adopted by this body in January of 2018. That plan, as best as I can interpret, is intent on guiding development along Trinity Lane so as to create a dense, diverse, and inclusive urban corridor, one that supports healthy and vibrant commercial nodes at key intersections between Clarksville Pike and Interstate 65. The plan envisions a highly interconnected future, one that supports multiple modes of trans transport, including transit and a strong greenway and pedestrian network. It's intended to shape the built environment in a way that facilitates a high level of engagement between private and public realm, while creating useful, and re useful recreational and open spaces. As our proposal before you today is the first large scale development along this corridor, uh, Plan, we've, planning staff has worked us over to make sure that this proposal in front of you is consistent with this plan. Uh, our initial submittal was in July of 2018. It was a straight zone change. They quickly told us to go away and come back when we had something for them to look at. There have been numerous back and forth to tweak that plan, to adjust it, to make sure uh, that they were confident it was consistent with the vision of that Haynes Trinity um, small area plan. So we finally got into a place where we're comfortable with the plan. Planning staff is recommending uh, approval to you guys that it's consistent with the vision that was provided by the members of the community up there. Um, and so we're before you asking you to find that it is consistent with that community plan. Uh, as Mr. Burst suggested, the plan envisions, uh, it's a multifamily residential development uh, proposed in three buildings that are placed to create a strong edge along Trinity Lane as well as new proposed streets. Uh, that, are, that are presented to uh, provide future connectivity throughout the region. Uh, our plan also creates private and public amenities such as uh, better sidewalks, sidewalks interior to the site, recreational paths, paths throughout the site. Uh, and in an attempt to provide optimal amount, an optimal amount of green space, we're also tucking a fair amount of required parking under the buildings. Um, that's an expensive venture, but in order to meet the plan's goals, that's what we were asked to do, and so we're going to do that. Um, 
The site is located on a portion of Trinity Lane that's envisioned for high density residential development and that's what we're proposing. That's what we're presenting in front of you. The site has strong slopes, uh, which we think work to our advantage. They buffer us from the neighborhood to the north. Uh, so we're on the downward side of that slope. Our buildings are uh, five stories. We feel like those buildings should not be visible uh, from the neighborhood to the north. Uh, in addition to that, there's over 400 feet of separation between us and that neighborhood to the north. Uh, and so we feel like between the slope, uh, the existing vegetation, uh, and the distance, we're, we're significantly buffered. At the same time, this is a pretty strong statement, statement for the Trinity Lane Corridor, uh, and we feel like this plan will go a long way to supporting the kind of growth that the community came out in droves and said they wanted uh, along this stretch of Trinity Lane. Um, I think it's important to note, too, that we have uh, begun a community engagement process we, uh, we've been in touch with our, our council member for the district. Uh, it's been a few months now that we've been back and forth communicating with him about community engagement. Uh, with that said, we are in the process of coordinating a community meeting uh, for February 26th. Uh, so that we invite the broader community to come and, and see our proposal. Uh, we've been at this for a very long time, since July, and we We'd like to continue the process through to council. Um, there's, I know there's been some requests to defer this application. Uh, we've talked to him. He's comfortable with us asking you all if this plan is consistent with that small area plan uh, and allowing it to move forward to council. And in that window, us engaging the community on the 26th, knowing that if we have to tweak the plan, if there's consensus coming out of those meetings that we've got to tweak it, then we, we have the ability to tweak it at the council public hearing. So with that said, um, Michael, if you want to add any technical details, uh, please do. But uh, I would just present to you that we feel like this plan's consistent with uh, the voice of the community that's presented in that small area plan. And we'd ask you to recommend approval. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, Michael Garrigan, 516 Heather Place. I'm a civil engineer with Dell & Associates. We provided the site drawings for this application. Uh, just very briefly, Dwayne covered all the, um, the planning aspects, uh, the fact that this does comply with the overall community plan as well as the small area plan. Um, I just wanted to point out some of the technical aspects, the traffic. There has been a traffic study submitted and approved. Uh, accepted. It has conditions that are placed upon this in the staff report that we've agreed to. Um, and other than that, the, the challenge for this was topography. We've, we've really accomplished that by um, breaking the buildings up, splitting the buildings, um, tucking parking underneath on the low sides, a lot of different challenges. So at the end of the day, there, there, there will be minimal grading to this property because everything's going to work with the grades. Uh, one building even has three grade breaks in it just to walk down the hillside. So um, with that, we do ask for your support, and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. We'll reserve two minutes for your rebuttal. <clears throat> Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support? Come on up. And you've got two minutes. State your name and your address. Appreciate you coming down. Happy Valentine's Day. More than welcome. Happy New Year's count, uh, Commission. My name is Donovan Hilton, uh, 739 Garrison Drive, Nashville, naturally, 37207. I'm maybe about three and a half minutes driving uh, from this site here. Um, let's see. And so I want to say, when it came to the uh, planning um, for this, uh, the amendment, I want to say I participated at least 85% of the process, if not 100%. I'm a very humble guy, so I'm going to say 85% of that process. And I stood here at the podium with uh, other community residents for approval of that amendment uh, as well. And so listening uh, to this developer here, uh, it sounds like the planning staff has gone and done their diligence, and they pretty much are uh, in support or approving of the plan. And it sounds like the developers are, uh, they're, they're, as far as their vision, uh, that's been consistent with the plan. It sounds like also uh, that the site is, is available for high density. I'm just reading back what I'm listening to. Uh, the site is available for high density. There has been a traffic study as well. Um, so for that reason, and I, I work closely with the community residents. Now, not, maybe all residents are in favor but working overall, the individuals do want that density, that they do want that economic development. And so for that reason, I do support uh, the, uh, 
excuse my lack of terminology, but I do support this particular project, I'll say that. But I do challenge and expect with all due respect to the developers and to the councilmen uh, to make sure that they are accountable and staying connected and engaged with the community residents because it's a very unique time. <clears throat> even though we did approve this, excuse me, even though we did approve this, at the same time, again, we have to be respectful of the individuals that are in that area. And so if individuals want to remain elected as officials, they have to be accountable and make sure they're connecting with the residents. So I thank the councilmen and developers in advance for doing that. And I do see this as a win-win deal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming down. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. Welcome. And two minutes and state your name and your address. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Winnie Forrester, I'm president of the Haynes Heights Neighborhood Association. Oh, you get five minutes. And thank you. And uh, I'm also a founding member of the Haynes Trinity Neighborhood Coalition. Um, and uh, I want to say also that I've been participating in the Neighbor to Neighbor Metro Planning Think Tank. And uh, some of the things that are going on today with our issue are many of the things that we've been working on in this think tank. And that's how to improve communication between planning, residents and developers and so where everybody has a seat at the table and feels heard and this is a perfect example of um, things that need work and so um, we've been actively engaging for our community for about two years now and we're a bunch of retired folks in Haynes Heights we've had to come up a huge learning curve and we're still learning a lot uh, one of the things that the planning staff told us pretty early on was that we need to engage the developers in the beginning, not the end. And so this time around, we took that to heart and we started engaging this particular developer last summer. I called him up in July, had a really nice conversation and uh, he said they were just starting, that they would get back with us, sit down with us, communicate, and <clears throat> I took it at face value. So I contacted him again in November, contacted him again this month, and here we sit, had to pull it off the consent agenda because they would not sit down and talk to us. I understand, and I appreciate the planning staff. One thing that we have noticed with the Haynes Trinity area plan is that the planning staff does their due diligence. Many of the times you don't see us up here is because y'all did your job. You know, there have been times we have come up here and said, we support this project because they sat down with us we approve it, and a lot of times we're just not here. Well, tonight we're here because we asked to be heard and we didn't get that chance. So we are not against this project by any means. All we want is a seat at the table. And I would like to put in one little thing about the developers are working for a gentleman out of New York who is an investment banker whose clients are hedge fund operators. That's all well and good, but you're looking at a minority community, mostly retired folks, and so we're just asking to level the playing field. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. State your name and address. You have two minutes. Thank Hi, you. Elise Hudson, 4601 White Creek Pike. Um, you guys know who I am. Um, so I, this particular plan falls under the White Creek Bordeaux plan area, which I'm very familiar with. I don't live in this area, but I do travel and shop in this area. So I'm part of that community during the day, even if I don't live there. Um, I know that the community would really like to have this deferred for another meeting so that they can have that. I think it's, um, I think it's appropriate in this case. Um, they're asking right now for over four times the existing zoning that asks, that, that's there today, right? I mean, it's single family and they're asking to move to multifamily and four times the density that would be allowed under the existing zoning. Not against development, but really want responsible development in the area. Also, this is an SP, and um, SPs, 
you know, generally have something that they're giving back to the community. I know that they have a community center built in here, but there's really nothing that's worth giving this kind of density in, in terms of, of this to a developer from out of town when it's not giving that much back. I mean, the usable space that you've got there, it looks like most of that's on the steep slopes they can't build on anyway. So I'd just like you to consider what that SP means and, and what it really, what we're trading off here. It's gonna set a standard also for that area. I also find it very frustrating that developers like to pick either the policy or the zoning and whichever one you know works best for them instead of actually working within the existing zoning and policy. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. My name is Quinta Martin. I live at 643 West Nocturne Drive. I did send a written um, notice as a request for deferral. My property is abutting the property that he is planning to develop. Um, and we have not received any information at all about what's being planned. I have been very active. My face was on slide two at the bottom. <laughs> As a part of the charrette, I was actively engaged at every meeting to find out what was being planned and how we could work together as a community to support development in the area. North Nashville, that area is very uh, scarce of development, but we want it to be constructive and productive development. Um, as I said, my property abuts this property that he is planning to develop, and I've not heard one thing about what they're planning to do, nor have any of my neighbors who have lived there with me since 1960, in the 1960s. And we would just like him to please defer his project until he's allowed us an opportunity to know what it is that he's talking about doing and get our input. Um, you know, when we moved out there, it was country. We had chickens and stuff. So now we're having buildings, and we just like to know what the buildings are going to be doing and how they're going to affect our nice, quiet neighborhood. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for coming down. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, two minute rebuttal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I, I appreciate all the input that you've just received. Um, with regards to communication with the community, uh, Ms. Forster did reach out to me early on, and as I said, we started with a straight zone change, so I, I didn't have anything really to show her, and I, I did commit to her that when we got closer to a plan that we felt like was receptive by planning and fit the, the community uh, vision of the small area plan, uh, we would sit down and talk. In, in that back and forth time that we had with the planning department staff, uh, we did engage our elected official, um, the council member, as to how he'd like for us to proceed with community engagement. And so we kind of followed that instruction, um, pursuing a broader, community uh, meeting. And again, he, we asked him just for the sake of the timeline if we were okay with asking you all if this plan was consistent with the small area plan um, in the meantime. Um, but he's asked us to, to pursue that, that bigger community meeting on the 26th. This neighborhood to the north is included in the notices um, for that community meeting. So we feel like they're definitely going to have a seat at the table. Um, this has been on the planning department's website since, in some form or another, since July. Notice, early warning notices went out in July. Um, I, I have had small back and forths with Ms. Forrester. The last one this month, I informed her of that community meeting that was coming uh, and that she should get a notice. So uh, again, she's, been, she's being invited to the table and we certainly are not trying to avoid community engagement. Um, with respect to the SP in front of you, again, it's the result of a lot of back and forth with planning staff. And they've gotten to a point where they're comfortable with recommending support of this plan uh, with respects to density, building type, and layout. It's consistent with what the community said they want. Um, the SP envisions how the site is laid out. It's irrespective of who owns it, who develops it. Uh, so with that, I'll ask you to support our Thank proposal you. today. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, we declare the public hearing closed. Vice Chair. You want to go first? <laughs> Since you have the microphone. Uh, 
Oh, yes, it's on. <laughs> Um, really loud, it is really loud. I like that one better. Um, okay, well, so obviously the main issue I think that we're all very aware of is the question around the community meetings. Um, and I guess from the planning staff's perspective, what would be your expect? What would be our expectations around community engagement given the fact that we just had a very intensive community planning process? 18 months ago. Would, I mean, does that change your expectations in any way? I guess I'm asking staff. <laughs> That's okay. It's like whoever's holding this. Um, I, it does a bit change our expectation. I mean, when we've gone out and invested as much time as we have in a community, um, our expectation is, is that um, you know, as SPs or other plans come through, that there may be additional conversations. The council member has a role in sort of laying out how those discussions happen. And for better or for worse, council members have different views about how to, you know, engage the folks in their neighborhood. Some have quarterly meetings, some have monthly meetings. And so we have to sort of figure out how to work within that. Um, we require community meetings for certain kinds of plan updates. Um, but beyond that, we don't have a requirement. This commission certainly has a history of, you know, perceiving that there hasn't been sufficient engagement and sending a project back um, for additional community engagement. Very often that happens when we have not been in a community in a while. And so I think you could take that in your, in, into account as you deliberate. Um, it's certainly in your discretion to defer uh, for a community uh, discussion. But I would not say that the purpose of the deferral is because we haven't been in the area, because we have. So your first obligation is to look at this against the policy. But we have broader you know, goals to consider, such as community engagement, and so it's in your discretion to, to do that. I would just urge you to take that into account as you think about whether deferral is appropriate. I don't want it to scream. Do I need to turn this off? No, okay. <laughs> well, that, that definitely helps. Um, you know, the, the plan sounds like it meets, very, very clearly meets the goals as was laid out um, in the, su in the supplemental policy that was put in place. Mm -hmm. All right. um, that said, the neighborhood, what the neighborhood has expressed that they've done is exactly what we want the neighborhood to do. I mean, reaching out to a developer nine months ago and asking for a seat at a table and following up, and um, I feel like that needs to be recognized too. Um, I don't know what the, the timing is like and if there's an issue with deferring it. Has a council bill been filed and do we have an issue with that, with deferral? Uh, there's no uh, existing legislation that's pending. Okay. Um, I mean, I think it's really important. I think that is our role, um, even though, you know, there's a lot of positives with this plan and it sounds like it's exactly what's meant to be in that area. Um, but I also think the point that this sets a precedent um, there's a lot of space that's open to be redeveloped in this area, and we need to make sure that the first thing in is going to be the right pattern for the remainder of that of that area. Um, so I think I would likely be in favor of a deferral, but I will wait to hear from other commissioners. Commissioner Bichelle. Um, Thank you very much. Well, uh, <laughs> you pretty much asked and said what I was already thinking. Also, the fact that you already have a meeting set up for the 26th um, means that that meeting, the results of that meeting could be taken into consideration at the 28th meeting. Um, so I would be in favor of deferring this one meeting to February 28th. Council. Uh, so first of all, I, I have a lot of sympathy for the developer because he was actually uh, doing his best to work with the staff in meeting the community plan. So. Uh, I by no means wants to, I don't want to um, uh, punish that uh, uh, effort to work with the staff, but at the same time, there is a, there is a, a gap usually on purpose between meeting the community plan and what you can do within the community plan, which is usually beneficial when you get the feedback from the community. Uh, and so I think uh, I agree with uh, my peers here in the commission that 
although I'm, uh, I'm in no way trying to uh, penalize the developer for his hard work, I also think we're missing out by not having uh, community input in the process or at, at, the, pr at the process of this particular uh, project, not of the community plan. So I will also uh, agree to vote on the deferral of one meeting just to give it time to um, have some, uh, the potential for some input from the community. So. Thank you, Councilman. Commissioner Sim. I agree with my colleagues. Um, I really like this plan. Uh, however, one of the very core principles, which is part of Nashville Next, which are part of our policies, is that we will enhance neighborhoods. And I don't know how we know we're doing that without including them in conversation. Commissioner Blackshear. Um, I'm certainly in favor of what the other commissioners said. Um, I will say we've had the question before about if there's a community meeting planned after the planning commission meeting, but before the council meeting, whether we um, just move an item forward without the community being basically the community engagement having happened before our meeting and, and influencing our decision. Um, and just relying on that community engagement happening at the council level. And I think we all agree that community engagement is really important, that it will help um, define the parameters of the plan and it, it will help us make a decision. So I think it is important, um, especially in this case, where you have an SP for the community engagement to happen before it, um, for the item comes before us. So I certainly am in favor of a deferral and I can make, make a motion. motion. Yes. <laughs> Um, I move that we defer this item for one meeting. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Is one meeting sufficient? Yes. It should be. It should be because the meeting, the community meeting will be on the 26th, right? And the next meeting is on the 28th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, the ne and so, yes, it would, we'd, we'd hear it on the 28th. So the community meeting, would, we would have plenty of time. So, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and that item is deferred one meeting. We also got um, a request from an applicant, from the applicant on item 17 to defer. Do we, director, was it one meeting or was it? One meeting. To defer one meeting, so um, they're here, and um, out of courtesy, we can take that out of order with no objection. So is there a motion to defer item 17 on the basis of the applicant request? Um, there's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of deferring item 17, one meeting, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Item 17 is deferred one meeting. And now we are ready for item 12A and 12A. And so what we'll do is we'll hear the plan amendment first, uh, the presentation on the plan amendment, and then on the rezoning, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have to vote on these items separately like we usually do. Good afternoon. Item 12A on the agenda is case number 2019-CP-004-001, a request to amend the Madison Community Plan. The request is to amend the community plan by changing the amendment area from T4 urban mixed use corridor to T3 suburban mixed use corridor. I'm sorry, T4 urban mixed use corridor and T4 suburban neighborhood evolving to T3 suburban mixed use corridor. Um, this plan is associated with the zoning case you'll hear about in just a moment. Um, as you can see here, here's the study area boundary. Um, and it's a common practice in the process of analyzing a community plan amendment that staff study an area larger than what's included in the, in the requested plan amendment. So you see the study area boundary in red and the plan amendment area in blue. Um, and State Route 45 is the southern border of the study area with Myatt Drive running north, south through approximately the center. Um, staff recommends disapproval of this requested plan amendment. The current zoning in the prop for the properties in the plan amendment area outlined in blue is CS and RS 7.5. In the larger study area, there's um, zoning areas of RS 7.5, RM 9, SP mixed use, and RS 20. 
The current policies in the requested plan amendment area are, um, as I said, T4 ur urban neighborhood evolving and T4 urban mixed use corridor with T4 urban neighborhood maintenance and T4 suburban neighborhood maintenance within the larger area. T4 urban neighborhood evolving policy is intended to create and enhance urban residential neighborhoods. Development in, this er in these areas under this policy are intended to provide more housing choices, are moderate to high intensity, and have high levels of connectivity. Um, T4 urban mixed use corridor policy shown in the brown hatched area is intended to encourage a greater mix of higher density mixed use development. Commercial uses are typically located at intersections with residential development in between with this policy. Um, the streets in this policy are designed for the efficient movement of vehicular traffic with space for other mobility um, modes such as sidewalks, bikeways, and mass transit. Um, buildings in this policy have moderate to high lot coverage and are placed at the back of the sidewalk or the back of the pedestrian zone. Um, the other policies in the study area, T4 urban neighborhood maintenance and T4, T3 suburban neighborhood evolving, um, are both intended to maintain the predominant residential development pattern for the character of that area. So in the urban area, it's more of an urban denser um, version than in the suburban area on the other side. Um, so T4 neighborhood, um, T, T4 and M areas are residential with moderate to high density development and regular spacing between buildings, while T3 and M areas are low to moderate density with moderate to deep setbacks. Um, and you can see the additional characteristics on the slide. So the proposed policy is T3 suburban mixed use corridor, which is um, in the, for the blue area. T3 CM policy enhances corridors by creating, encouraging a greater mix of higher density residential and mixed use development. It is served by multiple modes of transportation, but the efficient movement of vehicular traffic is considered the primary mode of mobility. Um, T3 CM is currently applied to the properties on both sides of Old Hickory Boulevard, which you can see at the bottom of the, of the image there. Planning staff hosted a community meeting on Tuesday, January 29th at the Madison Police Precinct. Um, we had 17 people in attendance in addition to the district councilman and the applicants team. Um, those who spoke up at the meeting expressed current concerns about the increased traffic and traffic accidents that happened in the area, um, as well as concerns about with what appeared to be a, a stormwater issues within the um, T4 um, neighborhood maintenance area. Um, we also received one written comment in support of the project and then one email as in opposition. The analysis for this request involved reviewing how the community character policy and the major and collector street plan de designations create particular conditions along the four streets. Um, Myatt Drive and MacArthur Drive, which run parallel to each other north-south, and then State Route 45 and Old Hickory Boulevard, which run parallel to each other east-west. Um, the CCM and MCSP designations combine to orient housing and services in a matter that creates a distinctive transition from Madison's suburban neighborhoods to the east to its urban core in the west. So um, staff determined that the application of T3 suburban mixed use corridor is not appropriate in this location because of the community's vision for the properties along these streets. Um, Myatt Drive has been envisioned to become a walkable mixed use corridor with neighborhood services. Uh, MacArthur Drive is an urban residential neighborhood street. State Route 45, which serves as a scenic limit a limited access arterial art parkway for the region, and Old Hickory Boulevard is an auto-oriented um, suburban collector avenue. And I'll show more of, of these um, contexts in the next slides. Um, here you can see an aerial of the intersections of State Route 45 with MacArthur Drive and Myatt Drive, and the site is outlined in red. Um, as I mentioned, Myatt Drive is the boundary between the urban development pattern to the west and the suburban development to the east. Its classification as an arterial boulevard in the MCSP means that it is a high volume, medium to high speed street that serves longer trips within and between com communities in the city. Um, additionally, both the community plan and the Myatt Drive Anderson Lane SP encourage evolution into an urban corridor with neighborhood scaled services. The Maya Drive Anderson Lane SP includes additional language regarding building placement, height, placement of parking in the rear of the businesses, and recommendations on access management, um, consolidating access points along the corridor. Um, the amendment area is not included in the SPMU zoning, but many of the characteristics are similar to those that are um, part of the T4CM policy. So a change to this T3, C, uh, T3 suburban CM policy would reduce the potential for the continuous pedestrian friendly streetscape that connects the neighborhoods to Myatt Drive. Okay, um, MacArthur Drive is an urban residential street with T4 neighborhood evolving policy applied to the parcels at the intersection of, um, of MacArthur Drive and State Route 45. 
development is encouraged to front MacArthur Drive instead of Route 45 based on the intent of development to create an urban pedestrian friendly streetscape along um, MacArthur. A change from T4 urban neighborhood evolving to T3 suburban mixed use corridor would undermine the character of MacArthur Drive and could increase the traffic. Um, application of T3CM would allow the parcels to be used for commercial use, many of which would require a second access point. Many of the uses would require a second access point. Um, because of this limited access allowed on State Route 45, this access would have to be on, on MacArthur, which would introduce commercial traffic within this residential street. Um, and the, as it should be noted that the current policy T4NE does not allow for commercial uses. It is strictly residential. Okay. In this image, you can see State Route 45 and Old Hickory Boulevard as they run east-west and parallel to one another. Um, State Route 45 is a multimodal scenic arterial parkway. It's a mouthful. It has a limited access roadway. It's a limited access roadway that provides mobility for cross-town trips while also, indicating, also acting as a linear green space. The multimodal overlay indicates that the route is intended to serve as a high capacity transit corridor in the future um, with, with frequent transit over the long term. Um, State Route 45 also has a scenic overlay indicating that it, is a co it connects areas of significance, in this case, um, downtown Madison to the Cumberland River. So application of the T3 suburban mixed use corridor currently applied along Old Hickory Boulevard is not appropriate for State Route 45 because of its designation as an arterial parkway and because Old Hickory Boulevard serves the purpose of the suburban arterial in this area. Extension of the policy would change the development pattern along Old Hickory Boulevard in a potentially negative way. Um, because of the established roles of Myatt Drive as a mixed-use arterial, MacArthur Drive as a residential corridor, State Route 45 as, as a limited access parkway, and Old Hickory Boulevard as a suburban corridor, staff recommends disapproval of the request to amend the community plan. Thank you, Stephanie. Now we'll go into the 12B, the rezone, the presentation. The next item on the agenda is item 12B. The request is to rezone from single family residential to commercial service zoning. Staff's recommendation is to disapprove. The site consists of three parcels which are located at the northeast corner of MacArthur Drive and State Route 45 in the Madison Community Plan area. The site is part of a larger area located in the single family residential zoning district. Nearby zoning districts include commercial service, specific plan mixed use, multifamily residential, and office residential. Nearby land uses consist primarily of single family residential and some multifamily residential, two family residential, office, commercial, and vacant land. The site is currently located in the urban neighborhood evolving policy area. Suburban mixed use corridor policy is proposed for this site. The proposed CS zoning district is not consistent with the existing urban neighborhood evolving policy as this policy does not support commercial uses that will be permitted by the proposed CS zoning. If the plan amendment were approved, this would still be an inappropriate location for the requested zoning as it would likely result in development oriented towards State Route 45 in a manner inconsistent with the existing development pattern on and around State Route 45. Given the aforementioned staff's recommendations to disapprove. Thank you very much. We'll open this item for public hearing and the applicant has 10 minutes and you can save two minutes of the 10 for rebuttal. Thanks for coming in. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Drew Cunningham. I'm with Racetrack Petroleum, 200 Gallery of Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, thank you all for having us here tonight. Uh, just briefly, I uh, wanted to touch on kind of who we are, what we're proposing here at this location. I'm going to let Sean go over some of the more detailed community plan amendment stuff. Um, what we're proposing here, well, first off, we're a convenience store company. Uh, we're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. We're making um, an expansion into the Middle Tennessee market, and we're growing. Uh, we're going to build seven stores this year, hopefully seven plus stores in Nashville and the greater area over the next five, six years or so. Um, we've had this this site on our on our target since we first made this move about a year and a half ago. Uh, we really think this site is going to play well to the traffic on 45 and that swing traffic on the Myatt. Um, just to touch base on what you're looking at here and what we're proposing. Um, this is a modern day convenience store. Uh, we like to think of this, this is more of our neighborhood market concept. So the patio there you see, that'll be facing Myatt Drive. That's going to have four tables, four, or four coffee tables, four chairs at each table, free Wi-Fi. We're going to serve sandwiches, freshly made pizza. We got uh, frozen yogurt inside as well as your stand, uh, standard 
coffee and roller grill items as well. It really is one of those areas we're trying to promote neighborhood walkability. We're going to have sidewalks around the property, which I don't believe are there up and down Maya today and is part of that community plan amendment. Um, and then as far as the orientation, we do feel like the main flow of pedestrian traffic is playing towards Myatt Drive. Um, another thing we've heard from staff and in the report is about scenic highway being, or um, excuse me, Highway 45 being part of that scenic boulevard. Well, currently today it's covered in barbed wire fence and we feel like if we come in, we're gonna come in, have buyer retention ponds out front meeting the requirements, the required landscaping. We really feel like we're gonna add to the scenic view up and down 45 and improve the area. Um, from a traffic concern, I heard that brought up as well. We, we don't think that anybody's gonna go right on MacArthur and go down through there. We're gonna take traffic off of 45, they're gonna come back, go left on MacArthur, take a right back onto 45 if that's the way they were going. If not, they're gonna take a right back onto Maya and go left at the light. We believe that's the traffic pattern that we're capturing and don't feel like we're gonna add any uh, negative traffic to the situation. Um, as I mentioned, Sean's here to go over some more of the community plan amendment details, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions if y'all have any. Thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Sean Henry, 315 Dedrick Street. Um, this slide in front of you is, is um, the uh, picture that was supplied with the application to amend the policy here to address the policy. This uh, question of whether three lots should be rezoned to allow this, uh, this racetrack site to be a viable commercial development site can certainly get bogged down on the, the intricacies of, of policy question. Uh, what we're pointing out here in the outline is the intersection of State Route 45, which is uh, in my drive, which are two major uh, roadway arterials uh, in Madison. And so what we have here are two policies that are corridor mixed-use policies that butt up against one another uh, but really ignores the fact that we've got a traffic light there. And so we've got two corners of this traffic light being considered as an urban policy, and we've got two corners on the south side of this traffic light being considered suburban policy. Uh, we submit that uh, all of these four corners should be looked at the same, whether it be T4 or whether it be T3. We think the policy should be consistent at all four corners of this intersection. And to just give you some measurement idea here, when you come south on that, from that stoplight, that's about 350 feet to Old Hickory Boulevard. We're asking to really mirror this policy so that that policy simply uh, flips to the north by about 350 feet. It's equidistant. And the size of these properties are, are roughly uh, comparable, anywhere from 1.1 acre on one corner to about 1.8 acres on another corner. So. That, that's our focus. The staff went pretty far afield moving north here to take in a much larger area to, to evaluate and analyze. Not sure why it went that far north, but we think the focus really needs to be right here on this intersection. Uh, this is what we used to call, if you'll remember, a commercial node. Uh, we've sort of lost the reference to commercial nodes in our, in our planning lexicon here in Nashville, but this certainly we submit is a commercial node and all four corners ought to be considered uh, together. Um, regarding the T4 policy, which is on the north side of this traffic light, the expectation there is that the buildings are going to be pushed up to this corner. And we think that's an unreasonable expectation that these buildings on the north side would be pushed up to the corner, you know, like Hillsborough Village, but on the south side of this traffic light, you would allow those buildings to sit way back and have parking in front. It's very much a schizophrenic uh, intersection based on the current policy, and we think that should be modified. Uh, if we go to the prior slide here, uh, if we can. So this is looking south, uh, my drive there, and, and State Route 45. State Route 45 looks like, I mean, it is a limited access arterial. It looks like an interstate. It's a major thoroughfare moving traffic east and west. Uh, there's a chain link fence that borders this property. In, in front of that, along the street, is a green space that won't be affected, can't be affected, TDOT. Uh, controls that, if not Metro. So all of that green space is going to remain. We're talking about what happens to this used auto sales lot <clears throat> and those three lots to the, to the right on this photo, whether or not it's reasonable to allow them to be consolidated into a single development site that would be viable. Um, in 2007, the Myatt Drive Anderson Lane SP was enacted. Uh, that's a mixed use policy. There hasn't been a single commercial investment on my drive in the past 12 years. 
Uh, this property was expressly excluded by amendment from that council bill, so it's not part of that SP. You can see the opposite corner there uh, looking, uh, looking south. Nothing has happened there yet. Uh, and again, we think it's unrealistic to expect whatever might take place there that it would be pushed all the way up to the corner. Um, uh, as you heard from my client, they're certainly going to be complying with every metro regulation, stormwater, uh, and importantly, sidewalks. There's no sidewalks yet on my drive. It's supposed to be a walkable neighborhood. Um, there's a Thornton's uh, convenience store on the far north side up at Anderson, Anderson Lane on the opposite side of the street. Uh, and these are two gateway corners. And so this location will pretty much mirror that location, which is the north side gateway along Myatt. And this is the south side gateway on Myatt. And so we're talking about similar uses. Uh, the current zoning is commercial. So we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the fact that the, the viable site plan needs more space. It needs the, the 1.3 acres or so, 1.7 acres to make this a very viable use of the property. So it's only these three uh, residential lots to the right in that image. Um, one thing that we'd ask for you to potentially consider here is maybe it's, maybe it's a special policy, maybe it's a supplemental policy to address this question so that these four corners can be looked at cohesively, comprehensively, and addressed in a manner that makes good planning sense. And so we, we think there's language that could easily do that, establish some radius, establish some distances, uh, as you consider the policy so that it can't be uh, expanded beyond these properties or beyond these four corners. So we respectfully ask for you to consider that. Um, and we submit that uh, the rezoning uh, makes sense. Mixed use limited is the base zone under that SP. Mixed use limited would also allow an auto convenience uh, operation like this. So I'll save my remaining time, Mr. Chairman, uh, for any rebuttal comments. So you have a minute and 50 seconds. I know there may not be anyone here in, in opposition, so if there's not, I'd still like to address you all. Well, of course, of course. Thank you. Um, all right. So, and Councilman, generally we reserve you go last, uh, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that'd be fine. Thanks. Okay. We'll make sure you're comfortable. Um, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support? Come on up. Thank you for coming down, and uh, if you'll give us your name and your address, we appreciate it. My name is Ken Johnson, 1040 Berwick Trail, Madison. Been there since, on and off since 1968. Very familiar with this property and stuff. Um, I just think it's better for this development and stuff being there than another Tochi Note car lot. Okay, I think it'll look a lot better. You'll get more sales tax out of it and more property tax. And another thing, when I got this rezoned to CS many years ago, I walked the neighborhood. Most of the neighborhood is all rental. It's not families that live there. Families that live next to the property, I've asked them, and they are in favor of doing this. It looks better than what they're doing. They think it's safer than what we have there now. Uh, so I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up, sir. Welcome. Yes, uh, my name is Duke Sutherland, uh, real estate broker with Crowlike Realtors here in Nashville. Been doing it over 40 years. I've owned three houses down on the lowest part of this street at 118, 119, and 121 MacArthur, which have already experienced some flood drainage issues down there since Bixler Farms was put in. And um, the, the drain going under the street right there on MacArthur is inadequate. There's very little drainage on the east side there of MacArthur directly behind where their facility would be if any water's headed that way. I went back out and looked at it again today in two of the three properties on the, on the MacArthur there are going, to, the water would be shifting going towards State Route 45. If all the water is draining toward State Route 45, we wouldn't have a drainage problem. But we brought Richard Kidd, who lives at 120 uh, MacArthur Drive, has already been flooded out, flooded numerous times and got, I think, some federal help, several dollars this last time, where he's been flooded down there. Um, 
in all the, the Bixler farms, if they seem to be at a stalemate right now, are not doing any building over there, but if they do any more, it's gonna create a lot more problems. So on MacArthur, I own the, those three houses that I own are all right on the creek. Richard is on the other side there, on the creek there, at the very lowest points of MacArthur down there, as far as that goes. The, um, as far as that goes, the racetrack facility, they're nice facilities. I've seen some in other states. I'm not against the racetrack facility. I'm a, I'm, my concern is drainage and getting it going toward, away from coming any more down the street down there, down there on MacArthur. Thank you. And sir, can you confirm your address? Give us your address. A mailing address or the address of the properties? Uh, your address, your mailing address. It's 917 Conference Drive, Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, uh, two minute rebuttal and then the council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regard, regarding stormwater, the, the stormwater uh, preliminary design shows all the stormwater on this site will be drained towards State Route 45, not north, but south on the property. So there will be no impact on, on other residential properties uh, in this vicinity. Um, I want to point out that the three properties in question are actually sandwiched between multifamily on the left side of this photo, which is zoned RM9, and there's also some RM20 back to the left and CS on the frontage. So currently they're, they're zoned RS 7.5. I mean, the current zoning is certainly not appropriate on those three parcels. And with this site plan, with this rezoning, it would allow racetrack as part of their site plan to eliminate those three residential lots into one commercial lot. They're gonna eliminate two driveway ramps on my drive into one driveway ramp. Those are all public policies that are, that are uh, illustrated in the SP for my drive. So. Uh, the sidewalk, you combine the sidewalk with the landscaping and the drainage, and there's a number of public policies here that are going to be implemented uh, should, this, should this commission find that this makes good sense and the council approves it. Um, and with that, uh, I thank you. Thank you. Councilman, come on up. Welcome. Sorry to take up your Valentine's Day. Uh, I, I want to make a comment on that, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, uh, in knowing that I was going to be here uh, this evening, my wife agreed to have a Valentine's lunch. So I'm going to thank you. She's happy, so I'm happy. <laughs> so I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of what uh, uh, that was covered by the um, the proposed uh, developers, uh, you know, I I agree with. I agree with. Uh, uh, my drive is a unique place. Uh, by the way, I'm Bill Pride Moore, District 9, uh, one section of Madison, this section. Just, um, in the seven years that I've been uh, representing my constituents, one of the first things that uh, I was approached uh, <clears throat> with by um, business leaders and also residential, uh, re my constituents, was they're wanting, they were afraid that Madison was, was going in the wrong direction. And, and not to say that, that we're, we're, we haven't improved some, but we are, it has been my goal and the other councilmen in, in Madison uh, to stimulate growth in the area. And myself and council lady Karen Bennett uh, attempted that back in uh, uh, 2015 when I was first elected and we drove, um, we rode around the chambers of commerce and all the community leaders around in the Madison and uh, actually all the the national realtors and all the, and, and brought them into Madison attempting to stimulate growth. Uh, obviously the way Nashville is growing, it's, you know, we feel, and I feel right now based on the inquiries I've been receiving from developers, uh, residential and commercial, that that growth will come. Uh, I, I would like to see it, see it stimulated more, but uh, it, is, uh, it is moving forward. Uh, 11 years ago, uh, Councilman um, uh, Forkham, uh, he, in his attempt to stimulate growth, also in that area, he uh, had the uh, foresight to uh, have Myatt Drive from say Route 45 to Anderson Lane, where the uh, from there it is industrial. Uh, the Madison Police Precinct uh, is there now, also uh, to have that area uh, zoned uh, mostly. I think it's SB and CS commercial. 
uh, as you see, since that time, there has been no uh, growth, no commercial growth. That when I came into office, that car lot on the corner was sitting there. Uh, it's been a used car lot several different times, and each time I, I drove by it, I, I, not that I have anything, I bought, I bought a used car many times, but I'm not against used car lots, but I'd like to see a more scenic uh, uh, building there of some, some business. So with his uh, foresight and along with uh, our hopes, we were, we were hoping that uh, a corridor that is industrial on one end and, um, and on the other end, if you want to go across State Route 45, uh, it is commercial or, and also that it gets volume of at least 30,000 cars a day. I don't, didn't do a traffic study, so I can't give you the exact number, but in other conversations I've had in other uh, rezoning or, or community meetings, I think that's what somewhere uh, generally around 30,000 cars a day go through there. So with that in mind, uh, we, we would hope that there would be some sort of uh, uh, growth in that particular area. We had a community meeting on January the 29th, um, and believe it or not, it was the best community meeting I've ever had. I mean, there was no, no uh, uh, contentious uh, statements. Uh, I mean, it was, we all walked out there with, uh, uh, and having a, it was a beautiful night. And, and I was, I, best I've ever attended, and I, and I thanked them for it. I didn't have anyone, we had some that had some questions, but no one approached me um, concerning storm, uh, concerning anything. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sutherland did approach me about some stormwater on some of his residential pro uh, rental properties, which I have uh, forwarded that information to um, uh, Metro Stormwater, and they are, they have addressed, have uh, had some uh, communication with him uh, about some rental property in that area. Um, <clears throat> all, all that to say, I just want to say that we, I'm trying to keep uh, Madison moving forward. We're, we're constantly with a chamber, a national chamber, the Madison Chamber, Rugate Chamber. We're, we're continuously trying to motivate um, uh, st or stimulate growth. And also, um, we just recently, on my drive, uh, Yaz Yazoo Brewing Company has moved there. They're building a building on the corner of my and Anderson in, uh, in the industrial park. And there is another uh, business that's getting ready to uh, break ground also. So I'm happy with that. And I would hope that with this, I mean, it's, 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 it's not a, uh, I mean, w with what they're proposing is, is a good idea. And I would hope uh, they have assured me that they would uh, have the pedestrian friendly uh, values uh, addressed. And I like to keep it to where they could, people could walk. Uh, but, you know, there's not much walking on State Route 45 if you want to stay alive anyway. So um, we, uh, I, I think that would be a good thing for them, for the community. And, and I, again, I haven't had any opposition. So uh, I would like to, uh, I'm in favor of this, and I propose that we move forward with it. Thank you, Councilman. Thank we, you. we really appreciate you coming down. Thank you. And having lunch with your wife instead yes. of dinner. Thank you. She appreciates it, too. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. And Commissioner Blackshear, you want to go first? I try to, you know, go both, go both ways. <clears throat> um, can I see what the surrounding policy areas are? Can you start to walk us through just a little bit? There's a lot of different colors and shades going on. Sure, yes. Um, so what you see in the brown hatch is the um, urban corridor, mixed-use corridor along Myatt Drive. T3C Hem is the suburban corridor along Old Hickory. Um, we have T4 neighborhood evolving policy here that um, is on both sides of MacArthur Drive. And then there's the T4 um, neighborhood maintenance area north of that. So. In our minds, it's the way this is set up is that the T4 neighborhood evolving that is applied to the bot to the southern part of uh, MacArthur serves as a transition into the to the maintenance area as you move further north on MacArthur. 
Um, and then there's the T3 neighborhood maintenance, which is a maintenance um, policy on the um, east side there. And so the, the corridor policy serves as a transition from that area into the suburban area. So um, the Thorntons that was referenced, um, I guess, is on the other end. It's at the northern end of Myatt and Anderson. So do you know the policy areas are for that? I believe it's in um, T. It's in suburban corridor. I think is that particular at that intersection, but it's also um, outside of the SP, the mixed use SP as well. Okay. So I don't know. I'm not sure if it predates the policy application or if it's which one came first in that particular. <clears throat> this one is um, this item. I know we're here in 12A, I guess in 12B at the same time, but we'll vote separately. But this is um, interesting because the recommendation for 12B would still be disapproval, even if the um, the policy change is approved. And basically, for the same reasons, it sounds like as the for the uh, recommendation of disapproval for 12A, just the orientation of the business as a so. I can I can speak to that just a little bit. So um, in looking at this area and um, the corridor policy that you see to the south, the yellow hatch, that's representing the old Hickory Boulevard corridor, yeah. not the State Route 45 corridor. And so we have the properties that are there are oriented towards old Hickory Boulevard. State Route 45 is a scenic arterial, and so it's not really acting as a commercial corridor. The corridor policy is reflective of old Hickory Boulevard. Boulevard. And so if rezoning this property, it would be essentially encouraging a development that would be fronting on State Route 45, which is inconsistent with the existing development pattern along State Route 45. Essentially, you are kind of got the tail of two corridors, if you will. You have the Myatt corridor running north-south, and the properties along it are intended to orient towards Myatt to create that urban corridor. And then you have the Old Hickory Boulevard corridor to the south, and the properties are intended to orient towards Old Hickory Boulevard. State Route 45 is really intended to kind of be that scenic connector between downtown Madison and the river where you don't really have things that are oriented to State Route 45. Thank you. That was helpful. This is probably one of the more complex items we've heard <laughs> in a long time. Um, I, I mean, Reading through staff's analysis, which was very thorough and very technical and also very thorough, um, <laughs> um, I'm inclined to agree with staff's analysis, although I do understand it, it, it just, just looking at it, it would make sense to place the racetrack um, store there, and I understand that it would visually be an improvement as well, um, talking about the barbed wire and replacing it with some um, nicer um, surroundings. Uh, I, I will certainly um, be happy to listen to the other commissioners and hear what they have to say. Commissioner Sims. <laughs> uh, first of all, Stephanie, thank you. That was quite the analysis for us. And I really want to thank Mr. Henry for helping me understand this too, because this is really one of the more complex, and it really depends on your orientation to the map. And so I am. If I, if I understand right, Ms. McCullough, the part of it is zoned already, though, for the T4, right? Correct. What's in the mix? So they're only asking for part of the property to be rezoned. Is that correct? That's correct. So if you see here in, the, in this um, right. image, right. that basically it's half and half. Yeah. So the, the right half is right. CS, and then the left half is RS 7.5. Well, I'm loath to do anything that's going to push commercial into neighborhoods. I just, we're fighting for all the density we can get in residential areas. Um, but we do have half of this already zoned, the what he wants. So I need to listen. This is, this was a hard one. So let me just listen. Thank you, Commissioner. And so let me just give you all a time frame here. The, we have a, a commission member that has to leave here in six minutes. So. We would like to try to finish this up, commissioners, if we can. So I'm going to, if, if you all keep your comments brief and see if we can get to a place where we're all happy. So, Councilman, you're next. Uh, no comment. No comment. All right. <laughs> Commissioner Michelle. That's quick. Oh, sorry. No, uh, 
these work that is only here and for the metro I think I think it's here on the river because this will show on channel three. Yeah. Okay. So um I where would the building actually be on the property, right in the middle? So I should say that this is a straight zone change uh, request to CS, and so it would just, as long as it met the CS standards, so there's not an SP under review. We're not looking at an actual design of a building, and so anything that would be permitted within the zoning would be okay, and so we can't really, it, it could change. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So we're not um, looking at the actual design, but at the same time, y'all are making your decision based on the design facing 45. But if the design isn't facing 45, if the design's facing Maya, then it's a different thing. It seems like they need the whole space really for parking, and that a condition can be placed where it has to face Maya, and that would without an SP to review a plan we couldn't place a condition on a straight zone change to say that it be oriented a certain direction so essentially with straight zone changes so far as it met the zoning ordinance they could build it so there wouldn't be an ability to put a condition on it and so that's that's why we were saying we'd recommend disapproval even yeah. if the policy sense. passed that makes sense. because it's not an SP that ensures orientation so if they came back with an SP um, with the orientation I, th I say without seeing what the plan mm -hmm. looks like to ensure that it's meeting all the goals of the various policies and incorporating transitions between where we have the seams of several different policies, it would be difficult to say. I mean, I think it would be a, a complicated site, but we would certainly review a plan. Okay, so in that case, I would agree with staff, but I'm going to change my mind Because otherwise, if we could stipulate where the building face, it would seem to be a really good um, development for this particular corner. And the channel three people just came, and I don't think this is working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is awesome. Um, so, um, so, so I know um, that's right. Um, well, can I follow up on that? Vice Chair, will you, you come over here and sit right here? And, and We can talk in the podium right here. Yeah, we could, but here we, we'll come sit right here that way. We'll get you, we'll get these things fixed. Oh, and I can see it, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if... If they came back with an SP following up on that line of thought, would we even have to go through this whole study area change? Yes. Yes, because yes, you still have um, urban neighborhood evolving, which is a residential only policy, which would not support any sort of commercial development. So it's okay. still, there would still have to be a, um, a policy amendment. Okay. Um, and just following up on the other question, why did we have to go quite so far up yeah. the, for, the, for the study area boundary? I mean, I understand we would have had to go, I guess, to DuPont. I mean, we generally don't just look at one parcel at a time when we look at a par policy. We look to see if there's a merit in that one parcel, but we'll look at a larger area at the same time to see if it makes sense from a larger perspective as well. I mean, I think this is very challenging because I agree with what's been said that I don't want to encourage commercial um, and generally, you know, like auto-oriented commercial into an area that's supposed to be orient, you know, moving towards a residential area. That said, it's sort of a question of where our study area actually went. Like if our study area went around that intersection going from 45 down to Old Hickory, I understand those are two different types of roads, but I just feel like we might be to the point of a commercial node. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think that, I think that we see the commercial node as being Maya and Old Hickory. You, you have a commercial node there yeah. on the existing corridor of Old Hickory where, it's, where things are fronting on Old Hickory because we don't have the orientation towards State Rail 45. Right. We would be trying not to encourage that. So that, and then the fact that there is a used auto spot, you know, an auto car, a used car lot right there. I just, I'm really struggling with why it, why it's not an appropriate use of that one spot. And I feel like there's, I mean, when we look at it from this perspective, I completely understand where staff is going. I just am sort of struggling. I feel like we're making a much bigger deal out of it than 
it could be, and um, even though I understand why. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what the options are. So what, I mean, can they, can, I know we've had situations where we've talked about converting to an SP after something has happened, but I've never understood how that worked. The director will answer that. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. We get out of We're going to appear on some like bloopers, like <laughs> bad administrative meetings or something. I think I'm hearing the applicant say, and I'm, if I'm understanding the councilman to agree, that probably the most straightforward thing here is if, if you were so inclined to go ahead and disapprove and then let council address it at that point. We could ask the applicant directly if they would like to convert to an SP down the road. Council does not have to approve the plan amendment piece of it, so we're just providing a recommendation to council on B, um, and so with the, the zone change request. So I think just in, in the interest of where we are um, and, the, and the comments I'm hearing, that's probably the direction I would go. So we'll need a motion. Well, no, but can she, when we ask the applicant first? You can, yes, yeah, we yeah, can ask I, yeah. Sure. Would you, That's what I was doing, gossiping over there, but Okay, yeah, yeah. so would you consider the conversion to an SP so that we had some? Yeah, timing is the number one issue that we can't do that, but secondly, I think the orientation back towards Myatt would be an issue for them. They've, they've put their outdoor seating area over there, but to completely orient the building to Myatt as a front door entrance and all of that is going to really mess up the site circulation and that won't work. So the motion to disapprove would be an appropriate motion. Thank you. Then I will make Vice a motion Chair. that we uh, approve staff's recommendation to disapprove item 12A, right? Yeah, we'll do 12A, 12A first. Yep, that's a proper motion. Is there a second to disapprove? Second. second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of disapproval say aye. Aye. 12A is disapproved, I now 12B. Make a second motion that we support staff's recommendation to disapprove item 12B. That's also a proper motion, and is there a second? Second. Second, any discussion? Seeing no other discussion, all in favor of disapproval say aye. Aye. And 12B is disapproved. All right, so that concludes, well, almost concludes our agen agenda. Yep, uh, the councilman, appreciate it. And we are on other business, so nothing on historic, nothing on parks, anything. Um, Vice Chair, we didn't have anything on the executive committee, although I do want to say one quick thing is that um, I felt like we had a really good workshop uh, with the commissioners. I want to thank the commissioners. We spent several hours with the staff, the team, and it was very, um, I think it was a great learning opportunity uh, and just really getting to know the staff and, and digging down into what they do. And I just really feel like um, that the commissioners, we are all very proud of the team and, and Lucy and, and the management team. So we really appreciate y'all. It was uh, very good. And I just want to say thank you and how much I appreciate it. And, I, and I've gotten several comments from the other commissioners. So it was, it was fun. And the pizza was good too. Um, any, that, anything else, Vice Chair? I think that was it on exam. Um, director's report. Yep. Sorry. Um, well, I just wanted to echo that and say how, how grateful we are for your service, that each and every one of you commit every other Thursday to the very difficult work that we, that we undertake here, and that you came and spent, huh? And on Valentine's Day. And on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and, that, and that you came and spent um, time with us last week and really dug in, asked a lot of intelligent questions. I think it helps the staff really uh, kind of feel a sense of, you know, not only appreciation, but that there's a good connection between what you're doing with the staff team is working on also, and that's just really great. The second thing I wanted to acknowledge is to thank uh, Lee Jones, Michael Briggs, and Sean Braystead. They joined me at a training session for 50 TDOT engineers on planning issues. These are new folks at TDOT, and so we talked a lot about 
planning, how we can work with the state, how important state roads are to the design and function of our city. And, um, you know, I, there were no sort of planning engineering barriers that I perceived. It was pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of good discussion. We, we look at things from a different perspective and a different lens, but um, I thought the team did a great job, and I was really honored to be asked to go and give the training session. So uh, that's all I've got. All right, and no legislative update. Anything else? So, seeing no other business, we're adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.